awesome. I feel like dancing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sylvain. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk about open source and get my cursor out of the way. Um, but more importantly, I'm here to talk about open source like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I had um, a very long and boring title to this talk, which is how to effectively manage open source projects, make engineers better, and save the world without going insane so you don't have to rage delete your Twitter account, which happens from time to time. <laughs> but, you know, I thought that, you know, like a boss was a, was a better title. <laughs> so just a, a bit of a, a cautionary tale here for those of you who um, don't know how to take things lightly. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm that. I added this slide because we have this comment system. That's me on the internet, on GitHub and stuff. Um, these are my observations, and they should not be construed as the right way to do anything. Uh, so no one has the answer, right? The whole point of being human is to go out and find the answer yourself and take things that you hear at conferences and read in blogs and distill them into your own opinions. Um, unfortunately, not everybody understands that concept. So just a quick aside here. Um, how many people have written an open source module? OK, cool. How many people have like found out about an open source module like just totally by chance? Like you're on GitHub and like somebody followed it and you like found out about it. Okay, so it's like a third. And then how many people like heard about it at a conference and read about it at a blog or something like that? Like somebody told you about it. Like this should be most of everybody. So like the real trick here is open source doesn't market itself. So if you write something, you need to go talk about it and yell about it on the internet in a you know polite and cordial way, but still yell about it. Um, and there's actually a great quote from Zach over at GitHub, uh, which is from a blog post titled, Open Source Does Not Market Itself. Uh, and it's that open source is fantastic, noble, and awesome, yes, <laughs> but if you believe in your project, and you probably do because you've spent so much time on it, you should try and get it into the hands of as many people as possible. And you shouldn't feel bad about that or ashamed that like you reinvented some wheel. Like Just go do it. It's great. It builds a better community. So I am a boss. Um, and I do this at, uh, at Nojitsu. Um, many of you may have used it, maybe not. Um, but before uh, I became a boss, uh, I was an engineer. So to make a transition from being an engineer pretty much full time um, to being a CEO, which I've been doing for about two and a half years, uh, is challenging because you have to deal with things like people and feelings and <laughs> politics. And you know, it, it takes a lot of effort. Um, and that whole people comment will become kind of obvious uh, in a bit. Uh, and so from what I've observed, it's, it's all about people and like how you deal with people and how you treat people and um, how you do that on the internet and how you do that in real life and how those two personas align. Um, but ignoring the needs of people will almost always lead to disaster, like every time. If you're like, oh man, fuck that guy, I don't care about him, uh, then that guy's not gonna like you. <laughs> It's just the way the world works. Um, and when you're doing this in a community or like a, some sort of company, um, those interpersonal relationships need to get more attention than us as maybe a little bit introverted, maybe a little bit you know, involved with our own mind developers need to, to get out there. And so let's talk a little bit about people. The rest of this talk is kind of just anecdotes about people and what I've learned about people having to deal with a lot of them <laughs> in both open source communities and node community and uh, at Nojitsu. So people work together from all over the world. And I know that this is more of a regional conference, but how many people are not from Paris? <coughs> wow, that's awesome. So like you all came to Paris to see this, but you all are from somewhere else. And whatever discussion that you have today will probably go happen on GitHub or Twitter later. And that's awesome. Uh, people like to think and have ideas. People don't like to be ignored or you know, like not feel appreciated. Like When that thing that you built gets used by lots of people, you're like, man, that's awesome. I built that awesome thing. And so people also have dreams and aspirations. So if you sort of think about, OK, I'm a developer and I write software, but like, what do I want to do with my life? Right? What am I going to do when I leave here? Um, myself, I make hot sauce, and I grow hot peppers, and that's like kind of awesome. Uh, <laughs> 
but people also have like fears and stresses, and this has just tons of negative impacts on people. So like on GitHub, there's some pull request that you've ignored for a month because you were off having vacation like a normal person, and that guy who's waiting for his pull request to get merged is like freaking out because you didn't respond to him, and he was really nice, and like wrote tests, and added comments, and updated the readme, and he's freaking out about it. And so you need to go and deal with that, and if it's just a like, hey, I can't deal with this today, I'm gonna go get back to you next week kind of thing, that means a lot to people. Uh, and obviously people have other fears and stresses about their career and their family and how much money they make, but those are sort of an aside to open source. Because people want to be happy, right? Nobody was like, man, you know what I want to do today? I want to be miserable. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> we all want to you know, be happy and work together and like, do things, generally. But this is, this is a good aside, um, talking about happiness in people. And when you deal with people in communities and come to conferences, people make the most important decisions about their life outside of work. Like The most important thing in your life it should not be work. I mean, for me, work is a big part of my life, but it's not the end-all, be-all. And like the decisions that I make outside of it are what define me. And I think a lot of people who get really involved in open source communities and have very strong opinions um, kind of forget that. So another side, we're talking about fears and stresses. People like hate to be ignored, like hate it. So if like somebody sends you an email at work and you're like, fuck that guy, I'm not gonna talk to him. Fuck that girl, I'm not gonna talk to her. They're, gonna, they're not gonna like you and that's gonna like last forever. People like don't get over that. So you have, even if you're just, again, if you're just like, sorry, I don't have time to talk to you politely, just do that because they hate that. And you know, at the end, talking about communication, people need to communicate. This is like the key of, of life, right? We, we invented language. We invented lots of languages, actually. Uh, I know enough French to swear in Quebecois, so tabernac. <laughs> but the real key is that people have problems communicating, lots and lots of problems communicating. And whether that's because of a language barrier or uh, an age difference or an experience difference, it doesn't matter. So people need effective leadership. And I can't really talk about leadership without talking about anarchy. Uh, <laughs> how many people know what Taco Conf is? Okay, one, that's okay. We got like one in the back, it's cool. It was like this sort of unconference thing that happened in Oakland earlier this year where Isaac, the like boss of the um, Node project and a, a friend of mine, gave this talk about anarchy in the Node community. Uh, and a lot of it stemmed from this thoughts of uh, particular organizers and, and uh, I guess organizational behavior theorists uh, from the 50s who said like, this is your basic company structure or mafia structure or whatever you want to call it. And it, it, it doesn't work, like that's not how you work. Like, you know, I say like boss of the node project for Isaac, but that's a joke. Like he's just the guy who's kind of has commit access. That's not, you know, his word is not gospel. We have appropriate discussions. That's the way it should happen. Um, and at a CEO conference that I went to uh, like last year, in corporate structures, um, you can kind of just flip that on its head and it works pretty well. If you ask one simple question to everybody that works for you, and that is, what do you need to be successful? So like, I'm not the boss at Nojitsu. I'm the enabler of things. Like, what do you need to do? Do you need me to help? Do you need to go like <laughs> yell at some vendor to like make sure that you get that thing that you need or you know, help you and this other person talk? But like, you're pretty much responsible for doing what you're supposed to do and enabling the people who work with you if you're sort of in charge. Um, and it's kind of this whole idea of shared responsibility, right? Like we're supposed to work together and make these things happen, but it's not any one person's single responsibility to make sure that success happens. But unfortunately, because of the inherent structure of this, it doesn't work well in an open source community because we're all distributed. And it ends up looking more like, oh, yeah, open source is great. Uh, Michael Rogers, again, organizer of TacoConf, organizer of NodeConf. You know, the best communities and the best projects start out as distributed open source communities. So how does something like this translate into this, right? Where somebody's at the center, but they're maybe only talking to three or four people maybe 10 people, you know, this is a very microcosmic example. 
And then, you know, those people all live in the same city, like some people live in Berlin, and some people live in Amsterdam, and some people live in Paris, or New York, or San Francisco. And so they see each other more frequently, and they go out, and then they formulate ideas, and those percolate more than the people talking to that. Um, and so this distributed graph structure is really the way things work. And so how do we make leadership work in this sort of anarchistic distributed graph? And the, way, the reason that it works is because people work on open source because they love it, right? We all love writing software. At least I find that the job satisfaction in the software industry is much higher because we do it because we really, really like it. You know, I've never written a project that I was like, you know, or submitted a pull request because, you know what, that project sucks, but I'm going to contribute to it anyway. Like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. I don't know anybody that does that. And this all happens, obviously, on GitHub. Like, who uses GitHub? All right, everybody's hand is up. Because GitHub is defining the language of communication for what we're doing. When I said, like, that guy with the pull request, I bet you, like, half of you just, like, you've been that guy before. Because you know what a pull request is, and you don't have to define it. So one of the other things that sort of falls out of GitHub, because they are you know, a very distributed team and they have a large organization, is to make everybody a manager. Um, and Ryan Tomeka, one of the co-founders, I think, of GitHub, has a quote about this, where he says, you know, one of the things that is often cited about GitHub is that they don't have managers. Uh, and this whole idea of not having managers is to bring everyone in this graph, make everybody the guy with sunglasses, right? And then it's just all of us as peers working together, and there isn't this hierarchy, because hierarchies don't work in the distributed system. Distributed system of people, that is. So people really need effective leadership with a little bit of anarchy in the age of GitHub. So let's talk about effective leadership. But before I talk about leadership itself, let's talk about what we're trying to avoid by creating effective leadership. Because the absolute worst thing is to feel like you, your team, or your project is going nowhere. That like you're not getting anywhere, and like this feature's never gonna get done, and it's, we're never gonna ship it, and it's terrible, and everything sucks, and I hate my friends. Like that's, that's when people rage quit their Twitter account, right? <laughs> that's why you need this. So before talking about what it is, let's talk about what it is not. So leadership does not mean you are the mom. Uh, I heard a great quote earlier this week, uh, which is that I love mentoring, but I hate hand-holding, right? You wanna help make people better, but it doesn't mean that you have to do everything for them. It also doesn't mean you are the king, right? So like, that's why that phrase, the boss of the node project is a joke, right? We just say it because it sounds good, but it doesn't mean anything, and it shouldn't. You shouldn't feel that, that feeling of self-entitlement that you get maybe sometimes, just like check it at the door. It doesn't work. And it's, not something that can be done in any sort of methodical rhyme or reason way, which is why that these processes really start to break down at big companies, because you know the HR person comes in and they're like, oh right, all people behave like this. No, nobody behaves like that consistently. That's what free will and free thought is. We all behave slightly differently to the same thing. And it really shouldn't require policing anyone and to make this point clear, like code style and you know white space and all those sorts of things that people get really upset about, shouldn't really be issues. I mean, I get I'm super like obsessive compulsive about those things, so like I'm as guilty as the next person. But you sh if you have something in your organization that requires like oh you know that didn't work or like you have to go back and check the code later, just either implement that as a tool like a pre-commit hook or just move on and accept that it's going to be slightly different for everybody. It's kind of like being a detective, because you have to go out and be like, what's going on, man? Why isn't, why isn't this working? How come, how come you even submitted the pull request for that feature that you said that you were going to write for four months, as has happened several times in things that I've wanted to do in open source? It's also kind of like being a referee. And that's going back to the policing thing when you say, either make a pre-commit hook that everybody has to abide by, or just move on because you're just like making a few rules that everybody sort of follows between. You're not saying, you know, you're not the football coach planning every single play that everyone's gonna make. You're the ref who's there is like, these are the rules, follow them and then like sort of do what you wanna do. Requires a lot of strength of character in mind. 
or else you're going to rage quit your Twitter account and be like, fuck this, this sucks. Because <laughs> people are hard to deal with sometimes. And like you just kind of have to move on and accept that. It also involves a lot of teaching. Like I said, I like mentoring, but I hate hand-holding. And there is a difference there, but they're both important. And oh man, oh, this slide, so much email, so many broken GitHub notifications, can't stand them. So if you can fix this problem, like I will find you money. I will help you raise money if you can solve my email inbox, like I promise you. Um, so it's really about fostering communication around what you're doing and more importantly, why you're doing it. If you can answer the question why in your organization, people will just work because they'll get it. But remember, nobody likes a bully. Nobody likes that guy who like yells at you on the mailing list or is like, fuck you, fuck where you're from, fuck your religion. Nobody likes that. So like, don't, don't do that. You're going to make mistakes. I've made a bunch of mistakes. I'm often cited as saying that I don't make mistakes, but I do make mistakes all the time. And that's OK, because people make mistakes, and then people protest. But it's OK to make mistakes. Just acknowledge them and move on. Because remember, you have a lot of strength of mind and character. Because otherwise, you would have already rage quitted your Twitter account by now, just like gone to live in India or something like that. And in my experience, yoga has helped a lot. It's so helpful. Um, but you know, find something that works for you. I love this quote. It's one of my favorite movies, Fight Club. The ability to let things that do not matter truly slide. Like, it just doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Don't let it bother you, just like move on. So in the end, leadership is kind of like being a ninja. And I'm going to close on this, this quote, because it's one of my favorites. Um, I'm a huge Futurama nerd, if any of you guys watch that. And uh, when you do things right, people won't be sure that you've done anything at all. <laughs> so thanks, guys. And thanks to the Noun Project, because that's where all these um, icons came from. So. Thanks.